what you're seeing right now is a group of mainstream media paparazzi trying to make a Hasidic Jewish community look bad for not social distancing, as they themselves are not social distancing. One rabbi commented saying you would think they found the Hunter Biden laptop. And in response to being smeared and targeted by the mainstream media, the Hasidic Jewish community answered back today <laughs> by starting their car alarms near the supposed journalists who were... <laughs> Oh, goodness, this is too good. <laughs> so, yeah, not all is lost. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukanowski of WeAreChange.org. A lot of important issues to get into today. Specifically, we are going to be talking about the U.S. Justice Department's major move against Google. And, of course, very important updates about the story of the decade that the mainstream media wants you to forget about. Now, regarding the Hunter Biden laptop story, this is still somehow an issue of contention, according to some big tech companies out there, where even on Wikipedia, this is still something that is false, even though there's overwhelming evidence proving it and highlighting important issues that there should be a civil discussion on. But if you do that, you risk, of course, the wrath of some of these big tech companies. And that's one of the reasons why we are, of course, 100% demonetized on this independent media channel, and your support is more crucial than ever. One easy, fun way to support us is, of course, through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash wearechange, where we have a bunch of levels where you could support us, and we will be uploading seven new videos very shortly that will be for your eyes only by the way these are the seven videos that already the sponsors of our previous gofundme got by the way if you supported us through the tier two level on the gofundme expect an email for us shortly we will be calling you soon tier level one level supporters expect three new brand spanking new videos and it is too late to sign up on this gofundme by the way your best bet is to support us through patreon and these three new exclusive videos will be predominantly available for you later on. Ten videos in total, only for your eyes only to supporters of this independent media organization. Sincerely, thank you so much for supporting us for as little as $7 a month. This means the world to us and allows us to still be here. Now, when it comes to one of the most important aspects of our modern day society, and that is a free and open internet, there's a major developing story happening right now as we got news that the U.S. government has filed charges against Google. This is specifically the U.S. Justice Department that, that just moments ago charged Google with illegally maintaining a search monopoly and search advertising, which now starts a very important legal battle that will take, of course, a number of years, but of course is also sending major shockwaves to Silicon Valley. Now this new lawsuit by the U.S. government is a result of a year-long investigation into the powers of, of Google and its concentration of, of course, the online economy. And we have to understand here, when we look at Google, we have to understand we are seeing a very powerful company that has been assisted through government to be where it is right now. It has made major significant acquisitions throughout its business history that has essentially allowed it to pretty much, in many people's opinions, own the entire market. And when you look at their acquisition of YouTube, AdMeld, Android, DoubleClick, you really see a very powerful company that many people call a monopoly. And that's even without looking at its larger umbrella under, of course, Alphabet. There has been a lot of shady seed funding from the beginning of Google. There have been many projects that have been working in tandem with the government. And of course, when you think of the largest and most powerful tech company out there, Google is the first thing that comes to mind. It's even became its own word in itself. Now, this is going to be a very extremely important court case that will be proceeding since, of course, Google has been demonstrating that it is very political. It does take political sides. And when it has so much power, you really 
do have to wonder the larger ramifications that are going to be caused by this. Already, I could name a bunch, and they are vast. And now, will the U.S. government break up what they deem a monopoly? Google, just like they did the phone companies a few years ago? Well, it wouldn't be a first, and arguably, Google has taken more aggressive measures, especially politically, that many people have said is akin to if a phone company cut off your service if they didn't like what you were saying on the phone. Now, there are even estimates that Google's control of the online search market ranges up to 80 to 90% control of it, resulting in, of course, tens of billions of dollars that provide it revenue. Now, Google is going to be arguing that people aren't forced to use their products, but of course, everyone knows if you want to do anything, especially online, there, there really isn't a way to, to avoid Google in many instances, especially professionally, especially business-wise. And it's pretty clear that they dominate the online space, and that's why other individuals like Elizabeth Warren are even going and saying that these recent actions by the United States government isn't even going far enough. And Elizabeth Warren has been an individual that raised this issue previously before. During her campaign run, she seemed mute on this topic. Now she's firing back. Now this is the beginning of a very important legal battle that of course we will be keeping a very close eye on since of course the ramifications are very clear. And even though this is beginning on a micro scale when it comes to search engine results, as we know, there still is a lot more to talk about when it comes to accountability and transparency with small institutions being empowered as they are right now. And now, jumping topics to an individual who is closely connected to the big tech monopolies, we of course have the latest news surrounding Jeffrey Epstein, who of course whined and dined with the biggest executives in Silicon Valley, even though he was a convicted child abuser. But yet still somehow clinging a part of the elite society, as described by BuzzFeed News, describing how he had many dinners with the most powerful figures in tech, which, quote, showed how connected he was. And of course, this is a very important story that, in my opinion, deserves more attention. Henceforth, why we are talking about it right now, when we just got the latest updates specifically surrounding the Ghislaine Maxwell criminal case, where we have U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska coming out and saying that all parties should prepare for the unsealing of Ghislaine Maxwell's deposition as soon as is practicable. Now, this is, of course, quote, extremely personal deposition that is uh, 418 pages long, specifically dealing with some of the more raunchier details surrounding Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. Now, this disposition comes from a previous court case surrounding Ghislaine Maxwell. Ghislaine Maxwell has been making many efforts to make sure that it is sealed, never to come out to the public. But now it looks like her battles have been lost. But it is important to note here that some of the testimony will be retracted. Why do we need more secrecy? Why do we need more privacy about the story of the decade that connects a lot of powerful individuals in authority to the most horrid acts? Gee, I wonder why. Now, this disposition could come out in a few days. Of course, we're going to be keeping an extremely close eye on it since, of course, we still know very little about this important story that should have everyone wondering what in the world were all the authorities doing for the last 30 years? Also, we got a very interesting article from the Daily Beast that detailed the last final days of Jeffrey Epstein from some of the witnesses around him. And through this article, we are finding out that there have been a large number of police foundation benefactors that were, quote, termed the one percenters that embarked on a, quote, stealthy lobbying campaign on behalf of Epstein that was meant to, of course, ease his discomfort behind bars. Yes, very powerful people that are described as the, quote, upper crust elites were literally calling in their favors to police departments to make sure Jeffrey Epstein had an easy time behind bars. Some even asking for pillows and toiletries. That one law enforcement official said that it seemed like they were prepared to cut a personal check on Epstein's behalf on the spot. Now, who were these individuals? Who were these upper crust elitists that were trying to protect a child abuser? Well, of course, that's something that we still 
don't know. Now again, this story is shrouded in more mystery than anyone should even reasonably expect there to be so, but there is, mainly because of Epstein's connections to very powerful individuals that essentially pinpoint him as a member of the establishment. Recently, we also found out that other billionaires like Leon Black also gave Jeffrey Epstein $50 million when it was still well known that Epstein was a child abuser. Now, why did Leon Black give a convicted child abuser that much money and enable him to abuse more children? I'm, I'm sorry, but if there really was some kind of justice here, there would be some serious charges, not just questions that need to be asked for Mr. Leon Black. Again, how this man was connected will leave you spinning just trying to entangle this web of powerful individuals, which of course included Prince Andrew that have essentially implicated themselves with their comments surrounding this matter. There's also new explosive allegations against Prince Andrew in a new book by Virginia Roberts Jufree, that again are, are too graphic to even mention here during this family-friendly YouTube broadcast. But this story being whitewashed, being ignored, the fact that many criminal elements within our society, within the supposed establishment, are still free, roaming the world, doing whatever they please, should make everyone worry. And one of the few places that you still see a legitimate concern about this very important issue, that you still see a legitimate conversation on, is of course alternative media, and sporadically, if we're lucky, the mainstream media. Again, we have to remind you that it was the mainstream media that was propping up Mr. Jeffrey Epstein as some great philanthropist. They were literally writing puff pieces, PR scripts that they were regurgitating, highlighting how great of a human being he was. Meanwhile, it's literally just independent media, a very small sect of the mainstream media, and individuals like Joe Rogan that legitimately are starting to ask the hard questions of what's really going on in our society, rather than, of course, talking about utter nonsense and trying to normalize more perversion. Sorry. If you look at the mainstream media's concerted efforts when it comes to normalizing illicit actions, when it comes to them pushing certain actions on children, it's overbearing, disgusting, and absolutely needs to be called out. So yeah. Don't let this story die off, and one of the ways it won't is, of course, with you as an individual deciding yourself to share this with your friends and family members. I don't even care if it's this video or some of the articles that we highlighted in this video. Get it out there. It's literally only the people online. It's literally the memers that kept this story going, and there are a lot of very powerful people that want you to forget about it. Don't. Again. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you sharing and watching these videos. And that's why I try to end every single video by saying, love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.